Hey everybody, uh, I got a big video planned today. We're going to do some maintenance on my angelfish tank. And the main thing we are going to do is we're going to get in there and we're going to attack some of that green slime cyanobacteria. I have it in two places. One is growing on the surface of all the vegetation that's floating on the left. So that's just going to get pulled out. We'll have a look at that later uh, in the video as I pull it out. So that's going to be easy. Just I'm going to remove it and throw it away. Uh, no big issue. The other area I have it in this tank is this strange mat of it that's growing down here. It never really seems to get anywhere else in the tank. Um, you can see on the very tip of that rock back there, there's a little bit of that bright green growing. And I'm sure I have it in little tiny places here and there. But for some reason, this one corner is this sheet of it. It grows on the glass and it grows across the bottom and then up onto that rock right there a little bit. So I've got a few things that I'm going to do today, a few little tricks, a few little cleaning techniques and we're going to try to do a little bit of a head cam. We're going to try to do a little bit of a broader view with my uh, better camera and we're going to try to do a nice thorough video today to show my whole process of getting that cleaned out. We're also going to wipe the glass down. We're going to do a water change, some water testing along the way, uh, and so on and so forth. So this should be a pretty good video. Uh, so make yourself comfortable and let me get... Uh, I've got the tank opened up. Uh, the forward lighting unit I have across the back so I can just keep that out of the way and the lid's open. Unfortunately, that makes the tank a little darker. I do have some supplemental lighting up here, so hopefully that's going to light the tank up well enough that you can see what I'm doing in there. Uh, we will get to these plants here in a minute, but first things first, I really want to work on getting this out of there. So what I want to do is not use this. I just want to show it to you. This is a gravel vac for a nano tank, and it's designed for doing very small water changes. However, it does have the valve and the very narrow neck in here and gravel and sand easily clog this thing up. So what I've done is quite a long time ago I made my own gravel vac that didn't work very well admittedly. Uh, there was an additional piece, I don't know where it went, but it fit this and then that fit into there and that was my attempt at a gravel vac. Uh, this thing is so big though, it sucked everything out so violently, uh, it just sucked the gravel right on up and out. So it didn't work as a gravel vac, uh, but today it's going to work for my purposes because that's exactly what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to do my best to get in there and just suck all that white sand and just a lot of this nastiness out of here. I don't really like this white sand. This is uh, one of the very, very earliest tanks I put together and I thought that white sand would look cool and I thought it would look good with the mixture of the gravel and I've never liked it. So getting a little out of that out of there is not going to hurt my feelings. I do have a bunch of gravel that I can replace it with uh, if I feel the need. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to see how much of it we can just suck right off the bottom uh, and then of course we've got my handy dandy razor blade on a stick scraper. The razor blade here does need to be replaced. I can see it's a little rusty and uh, scratchy. Uh, we've got a scraper and then of course my filter material that I use as um, pads. We're going to wipe the inside of the glass down. So let's see what happens when we do this. <clears throat> Hopefully that'll stay in the bucket, but boy, it really drains quickly. Yeah, that's what I was hoping to see. I just want to suck all that stuff right off of there. Careful, I don't catch a fish in this. Well, I gotta say, this is working much better than I had anticipated. I'm not really gonna have to get in there and do a lot of scraping. And considering as easy as this is, I don't really have to worry a whole lot about it coming back. If it does, I can just do this again and clean it right out. I'll get rid of a lot of this nastiness in this corner. Always keep your eye on that bucket. 
So I am going to actually call that good because it's starting to clog up anyway. And I did miss some. Uh, I can see back there there's still some sheets of it. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this emptied out without spilling this stuff everywhere. And then we're going to use this bucket. And we're going to keep on going because that was really effective. My main concern is just this green slime algae and this rock I can actually just pull out of here. It's not really serving a whole lot of purpose. Some of these can get snipped back. Uh, in case you're wondering if you were following along with my angelfish saga, none of the wigglers made it. Um, Sorry about the back of my hand again. It's just hard to do this in this position. Uh, the wigglers got placed in these leaves, and then, of course, as soon as they were there, the red serpent tetras had the advantage because they were able to simply get into the areas where the angels couldn't get to them and just eat their fill of eggs. All right. So that is all we're going to do as far as the water change is concerned. It's a little shy of 10 gallons, uh, but that'll be about 10%. So we're actually going to go test some water and see what the pH and the nitrates and everything are in this. And then we're going to work on getting this filled back up. And in the meantime, I'll wipe the glass down. And when we come back, we'll have a look at what the vegetation looks like now that the water level's low. And we'll see what we can do about that. So sit tight, and I'll be right back. All right. Based on how high those nitrates are, I'm thinking I want to do a little more than a 10% water change. They're actually coming in a little higher than I was expecting them to. I thought they'd be just under 40, and I'm calling that just over 40. That's clearly into the red at this point, so that's maybe 50 parts per million, something like that. Uh, that's too high for me. I'm going to bring it down. So we are draining a little bit more water out of the tank while we go back over and pull those plants out, and I'm going to wipe the glass down. That won't take too long. Uh, so it'll be another 5 or 7 gallons out of the tank. The pH in the tank is on the right there, that is about 6.8, and out of my tap is my usual 7.3, so that's a big shift if we were going from one to the other, but it's not such a difference that when we do a water change of, say, 20%, it's really going to shift the overall water, so we will look at the end to see how much shift we actually got, uh, but it won't be too much. The nitrate's coming down. Uh, will probably be not that significant either because we're not going to do a huge water change so don't expect uh, much on that end either but let me go get to it and we will go get some more uh, action footage of cleaning the tank out all right everybody we're back over here and we got to move fast because we are losing water pretty quickly um, I think I am going to just pull all of the plants out of here you can see how once we start looking at this you can see how it's got that sort of sheet of green on it so that's some pretty nasty stuff. I think it's just time for a lot of this stuff to go. And fortunately, I don't have any frogs or fish or anything in this tank that would be hiding in there that I have to worry about accidentally pulling out. And I'm probably going to leave some in there so that the tank is not completely devoid of floating vegetation. But I definitely want to take the bulk of this stuff out because it's just getting old and funky and it's overgrown. Uh, the stuff grows back fast enough that it won't be an issue and I have enough of it in enough of my other tanks that that won't be an issue either. I can simply wait until I've got too much in another tank in a week or so and it'll be enough to fill this tank back up. So that's never really a concern either. See, I'm not really seeing any of this stuff that looks like it's worth keeping in there. And of course once you pull the 
bulky plants out. All you've got left floating is all this debris. So I can worry about this debris later. I can get in there with a net and skim the surface. As I said, we're a little pressed for time. I don't want to drain too much water out of the tank because um, I still will be shifting the pH. So this is just going to be a nice simple wipe down. You can already see the amount of stuff I'm picking up on the pad here. So this is a pretty big disturbance for everybody, but they've been going through this for a couple of years now, so not that big a deal. The angels just tend to hunker down in a corner somewhere and wait for it to all be over. See, that's where you got to be really careful when you are scraping uh, or you're wiping down near the bottom. If you get a little bit of your substrate picked up in your pad or your razor or whatever you're scraping with, uh, you can scratch your glass very easily. I don't know um, what type of substrate you're using, but a lot of it will scratch your glass if you're using any kind of gravel or sand. Uh, this stuff. The white sand is actually, um, it's the same as what they sell at the big chain pet store as gravel, but it's not really gravel, it's a very dense inert plastic. And this stuff is just like the fine little bits that are left over. I always imagine kind of, you know, as the machine runs during the day, all the little bits that fall through the cracks get collected up at the end of the day and they sell it as sand uh, instead of gravel. Um, but that's all it is. So I don't know if that's actually hard enough to scratch the glass, but I know the actual gravel in here, which is real river gravel, is certainly hard enough to scratch the glass. And then this type of substrate will absolutely scratch your glass. I've done it. In fact, I've got some scratches in my 125 already from this very thing. So I know what I'm talking about uh, when I say that. You should be really careful. So we're going to call that good. Uh, that's plenty of water out of there, and we're going to just start filling it back up, and I'll go get my little hand net, and we'll start skimming uh, some of the stuff off of the top of that and see how much cleaner we can get it. So, uh, so right right nets all the way down from about two square inches up to this. I actually have some nets that are uh, made to be bait nets for fishing that I have used from time to time in various tanks. But this is my go-to net. I love this one. It's nice and big. It makes it very easy to do whatever you need to do with it, whether you're collecting up little bits of plant or you're trying to collect up fish. Uh, this net is almost so big they don't even notice they're swimming into a net. But, of course, if you were using this in a heavily planted 10-gallon, uh, that wouldn't work out very well for you. So if you can see all these little tiny green bits, that is actually uh, duckweed. I put duckweed in this tank at one point uh, a year or two ago, and if you've ever put duckweed in a tank, you'll know you'll never get duckweed out of your tank. Well, you can, but you've got to get every single solitary little piece of duckweed out of your tank, or your duckweed will just keep coming back. If you leave one piece of duckweed in there alive, it will grow back. Um, it's just kind of a nuisance once you put it in there. I was told I'd regret it, and while I don't necessarily think I would say I regret it, uh, I definitely underestimated the staying power of duckweed. So one other thing I will do when I'm done doing something like that with the net, because you know we just cleaned up a bunch of cyanobacteria-laden plants and everything, and I've scooped them up in this net, I will use my hydrogen peroxide. I'm not going to do it over here. I'll go do it over in the sink. But I'm going to thoroughly spray this net down with hydrogen peroxide to sterilize it. And then we will go ahead and get on with filling this back up. Uh, it is already filling at the moment, uh, but we'll let that continue. So. All right, now that the tank is refilled, we have rechecked the pH and the nitrates. So this is my tap water. This was our original tank, and that is now the finished tank. So if we look at the original tank against the card, it comes out at pretty much exactly at 6.6. .6. We look at the new after tank and it comes out pretty much exactly on 6.8.
So we're doing fine as far as the pH, no big swing. It did shift a little bit, but that again was a fairly significant water change. The pH, I mean the uh, nitrates here, you can see have clearly dropped from very bright red down into the uh, above 20 still. I'm definitely calling that oranger than the 20, but we're def definitely below 40 now. We're definitely into the orange. So no sweat on the nitrates, and we will be doing a little more work on that tank soon. So even though I won't do a big water change on it, uh, a little more of an additional water change will lower these even further without affecting the pH very much. My buffering capacity in my tanks is very low, so this pH will have adjusted by tomorrow. We should be having uh, the pH stabilized back around 6.6 .6 where that tank normally sits. So one last look at the tank, and we'll be all done. And there you go, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Uh, removing all those tannins really brightened the water up, but removing those plants and that floating vegetation really uh, brightened the tank up a lot. So we're going to leave it like this for a little while. I know it's a very stark difference than what we just saw, uh, but I don't mind it like this. This will be a, a change for a little bit. It'll give those plants on the bottom uh, a little bit of time to thrive and get a lot of high light. And then as time goes on, we will get more plants back in there floating and the tank will slowly get greener and darker uh, and will soon look like it normally does. The success I had with my attempt at pulling that cyanobacteria was just beyond what I had hoped it would do. It really did a great job of peeling it out there. Um, I don't know how well it came out and you could see how it was just coming up in sheets and being just sucked out of there like I was just pulling carpet off the bottom but it really did and it really just pulled all of that nastiness off the gravel uh, this darker stuff that's down in the gravel I'm not too worried about and again as time goes on I think we might use that technique to slowly just remove the gravel altogether uh, and get that white sand out of there and then I can slowly replace it with actual aquarium gravel or something different so we'll see, this tank is always going to be in flux for me because again, I've said before, I've never been 100% satisfied with this tank. It's always been kind of something I threw together in the beginning and I've never really had any purpose or direction with it. So we'll see, but that was a good uh, trick to get rid of some cyanobacteria in the bottom. I'm really happy I tried it. It worked out really well. So I hope that was helpful to somebody. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. That way you won't miss any updates, anything I got coming up. And I will see you real soon on the next one. Thanks for watching this one.